What did I buy? Stick around and find out in today's video. Guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today we are going to explore some of the items that I purchased off camera. Um, I, as I said in the last one, uh, I have really enjoyed doing kind of like the classic haul video, if you will. Um, I know that some people have let me know that they do prefer the shop with me videos and right on, right on. Um, definitely check out the shop with me videos, but today's video is going to be a haul. Um, as I've stated in the past, I enjoy doing the hauls because I think that we get to look at the items a little bit more in depth. And not only that, I have discovered, especially with some of the items you'll see today, um, by not filming, I'm better able to concentrate on what is literally right before me uh, and definitely picking up some smaller um, some smaller pieces. Uh, I have enjoyed selling the smalls. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, first up, we've got some glass. Of course, we have got some glass. Let's take two examples here. Um, the first glass manufacturer that I'm going to show to you guys, they are both Westmoreland. They are both the miniature pedestal vases. I have really enjoyed picking up these miniature pedals, pedestal vases uh, because I think that they work as great accents to home decor. Um, obviously, there is a big love of the mid-century movement right now, and I certainly respect that. I do think, however, that a lot of people are very constrained with the amount of display uh, space that they have, so that is one of the main reasons as to why I enjoy picking up these little uh, pedestal swung bases. But we do have, again, two examples of West Moreland glass. We do have their ever popular mist or satin glasses. This one is in the brown mist. I don't often find the brown mist, which you can see the hallmark kind of sort of right here in the middle ish. Yeah, there it is. Um, I really enjoy that color. It's a very earthy tone, obviously, goes into a lot of home decors. This fits great not only with the mid-century vibe, but definitely um, with an antique vibe, with some great antiques. Here I happen to have like a jewelry casket. This color is a phenomenal addition with some books to it. Stop it. I think that's a fabulous look. If you want to add a little bit of color without it being too garish, too bright, you can certainly check out that amber tone. Um, I love Westmoreland's amber, I think above and beyond anybody's. It just has such a warm honey tone to it. I just, you know, it doesn't come across very brown. Um, again, very earthy. Look at that. That's fabulous. Mid-century for sure. Put it in a mod home decor, but I think it works well also if you want to kind of pick up an antique collection. These two clearly go well with one another. Up next, we do have another miniature pedestal vase. This one is in a clear satin with our lily pad pattern down here. This one is Fenton. It is stamped right down here along the bottom satin gla or clear glass part of me is always so fun to show on camera i love it it's simple it's elegant it needs a bath <laughs> but that's all right we're not gonna let that stop us there is some scuffing which is very kind of here don't focus on me um that typically will come up with a magic sponge obviously you don't want to be super aggressive with it because they are abrasive and you don't want to scratch the satin effect to it but again a nice light rubbing should take up those mar marks no problem i love this one now this next one is i don't know i don't know if it is fenton if it's not fenton um it's definitely in the Fenton marble or slag glass is more commonly referred to. This one though is odd. The color density on it, like you can see the glass coming through here. It's translucent along the perimeter on the pedestal to it. Um, I do think it's Fenton. I believe it's Fenton. It doesn't have a hallmark so i'm unsure it's got great vining vining it's got great veining and swirling throughout the piece this one is great 
for those winter decors, but also spring with some pink, some jadeite to it, a little bit of yellow. Certainly this one goes great, I think, with the clear satin glasses, a very calming effect. Um, maybe for some folks, you have the opportunity to put this into a bathroom. Again, it needs a little bit of a bath up here. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that blue and white together. So those were our miniature pedestal swung vases. Let's see what else we've got. Okay, so up next, we've got some amazing smaller things. Um, I don't know where we're gonna start. Let's start with this. This is a little bit unusual of a purchase for me. Let me grab this, okay. We need a prop. Um, I bought this. These are vintage. These are not antiques. Um, but I love, oh my gosh, do I love the colorway in these. But I bought this collection of marbles. So how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. Woo. 15 of the marbles oh, that color oh my goodness now some of them do fluoresce i don't know if we're going to be able to really pick it up with the cadmium in there like these orange ones these will fluoresce the green ones don't fluoresce too much boy that background is certainly fluorescing of course we're not going to capture it because of the natural light coming in on us but i love the colors on this these would go great if you had let's say an amber or a yellow depression flower frog to kind of pop those on oh my goodness i love those these go great again that color scheme going with the amber glass here from westmoreland or of course if you want it more earthy that brown satin oh i love these natural colors so i'm very excited to have picked up these marbles that's a great i love that collection instant collection speaking of flower frogs um i did pick up a flower frog we do have a black amethyst flower frog uh, these obviously would go into a variety of different vases both glass and pottery um, you know they go onto the top and it allows you to do your floral arrangements these actually are very practical for contemporary florist um, you, you can get, depending, of course, on the flower that you use, several stems into these holes, and it does allow it to kind of spread out. So very practical, or you can certainly use it for, and I don't know what I have, no, a pen to put onto a desk or to display your marbles. So um, we definitely picked that one up. Richard has a vase. We're going to see if that one fits into the vase or not to be determined. Now, a recent passion of mine has been <laughs> Victorian milk glass. Um, I am collecting a very specific color in the Victorian milk glass. It is a more difficult one to find. Um, it's like that minty green. I've become obsessed with the salt and pepper shakers. Who knew? Um, I love this color as it is, but it is, of course, um, uranium. So we do, we're not going to see it on camera. We're just going to see the bright purple. Um, we do get a uranium green glow to it. Kind of, sort of. Um, I don't know. I love this color. I really do love it. This one does have a straw mark back here on the back. It's not a chip. It's not a crack. Uh, it, it just happens. It's a molded piece of glass. Um, they do use those metal shears, so when they're cutting the molten glass, if those shears are too cool, or I should say, if there is too much of a temperature variance between the shears and the molten glass, this is created because this part of the glass begins to cool faster than the rest of it. So you get those straw marks. Um, now this one was used. It's not uncommon for the salt and pepper shakers, of course, to have a variety of different chips to them. This one is not uh, an exception to that rule. Uh, I like it. It's a lot of character. I have, this will be my fourth one. <laughs> They're difficult to find in this color. That's a serious um, stopper on the top of that one. It's got some serious weight to it. So I'm very excited to have found that one. Let's get into some smaller stuff. Um, speaking of the Victorian era, now this one is kind of like at the very tail end of the Victorian era. I have, I have one of these. This is a Victorian era. Look at that. The relief on there. 
It's so super Art Nouveau on there, but it is a beaded coin purse. We've got a gorgeous burgundy, kind of like a crochet with that uh, hematite. Hematite, I don't know if they are for short or not. I'm, actually, I think they are. With the hematite beads on there, gorgeous pattern. It is in excellent condition. You know, you just have your little pop right here. Oh, if I can get it. And we pulled the tab, the tab up. Now the vendor did have the tissue paper in there. Um, every time I found them, the vendors have all put tissue paper in them to kind of help keep form. I'm gonna leave it in there because otherwise they can get a little smushy. Now this one I wanna say did in fact have a patent date, December 15th of 1903. So it's right there. Kind of, sort of, yeah, there you go. I hope that it reinverts itself. So that was really exciting. I love these small treasures. I just absolutely love them. It's great to have these small things because they were so easily discarded or lost or damaged or broken. So when you find one in this kind of a condition, it's always a thrill for me to pick them up. Now, speaking of something that was damaged, <laughs> however, these are so incredibly difficult to get that I was not about to pass it up. This is only the second one of these that I have. It is a Christmas item. It's kind of like that Victorian era. It's an ornament. Um, let me try to get, she's got a little something on there. But it is our little, now she is, she's a composition. I have a wax one. Actually, she's composition encoded in wax. I have an entire wax one, but look at that, the angel. You see where her condition is. She is blessed. She is missing one of her arms. Like I say, um, not uncommon to find these damaged in some capacity. Why I made the exception to this rule is because her face is entirely present. Her hair is still there. We do have the spun glass wings on there. Now, it looks like at one point she would have had little decals on both wings. We have one that's present, more than likely gold or silver, kind of like an adhesive or I should say a, a die cut um, that was then adhered to the wings. Obviously, one is missing. And then she's got her little sash on her, but she is so precious. I hate the fact that the wings, this is actual spun glass. Don't know if you can see those fibers. They are hateful because they will stab you. So you do have to be mindful. She's going to more than likely have to live in a cloche. Um, $15 this is what I picked her up for. Clearly she is damaged. I think that she is still tremendously undervalued at $15. I've seen worse ones go for much more. Speaking of tiny treasures and angels, these two are great. They are so my vibe. Um, they look like they would have been ornaments themselves. They've got little backings in the back of their head. They're both stamped Japan. Japan, Michael, hello. They're both stamped Germany, I should say. But they are these little composition angel heads. Now we do have a little... Yeah, a little bit of a boo-boo right here on this one's wing, but I don't care. Look at this one. Are these not fabulous or what? The look to these, you know, more than likely depicted as a boy and then this one as a girl, but I think they are fabulous. They're very small. They're very tiny, and I love it. Again, something that would be easy to lose or to damage, so super excited about those. Now, this next piece is interesting. I've left it on the backing, it's a little piece of foam, but it's giving me 20s vibes to it and it is in very good condition. Look at that brooch. Ooh, with the little dangly bits here. Oh, I love it. Let's pull it off of the backing. She does have an older clasp on her. It is not stamped or hallmarked anywhere that I can see. 
but there is the back. It's got some great weight to it. Again, look at those chains. I love this one. I don't know if it's coming in clear because my hand's in my way. Oh, that's beautiful. And look at the bar is even finished off with the black. Isn't that lovely? But right, giving us like late Art Nouveau, early Art Deco, I just think that it's fabulous. That is a statement piece for sure. Oof, love that. All right, I'll be right back because I got a cut to show you the next piece. Next piece came in one of these, this is glass, but this cardboard, I love this, that vendors will do this. So let's pop it out. It's just held in place by two very aggressive stick pins. And what we've got on the interior are some glass beads. Now we are jumping forward to about the 1920s. We often hear about our flapper girls. Well, now you can really live it out. Look at these, these are glass beads, okay? And they are strong. These gorgeous blue, kind of like in a colonial blue, but they are glass flapper beads. So, you know, they just went over the neck. Let me not do that, because I might not. <laughs> Look at that with the little tassels down here. Now, one of them, actually, no. I don't know what's going on. I do appear to be missing some beads on the one strand, but it seems to have been, it's going into, both of the, both ends are going in there. So I don't know if that was the finishing knot or what. But on this back one here, I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Can you see it right here? But both are tied into this one. So I just think that's fabulous. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Could you imagine like the parties that this saw and bouncing around? You know, you had a lady in her beaded dress. Like we're going to be super stereotypical. But these are in overall really good condition. You know, they're over 100 years old, more than likely. So this was fun. Look at the faceting on the bead here. You've got more faceting. You've almost got like a prism shape to those. I just think these are great. Uh, like I say, definitely an unusual item for sure. They can certainly still be worn. But this is the legit real deal. So to find those was quite exciting. Okay, let's do some ephemera. Um, the first piece that I have is this under C. It is a lithograph. It's got like the squids, the octopods. Look at those. You got your squid over here. Octopus is coming out. Oh my gosh. It's in really good condition. I haven't opened it. It's very much looking, I'm looking for an opening right now. It's giving me the idea or concept that it did come from, let me grab the scissors. It did come from a book that's been removed. Oh gosh, got to be careful when I open this one. Carefully, carefully. Mm. All right, let's check out the back and see if we can get a date on this. I don't know. Well, somebody dated it 1905. Yeah. 1905 but it's a blank so maybe no it did I really feel like it came from a book you can kind of see some of the glue the residue albeit removed very well it says deep sea life common animals with head and feet jointed number one the agronaut Number two, common calamar, common calamar. So this is your calamari, what you traditionally will eat, very, very Mediterranean. Three, the same species, like an egg-shaped grape. I don't, egg-shaped grape. I don't know, here's the number, but I don't really see, this doesn't look like an egg to me. Four is a common 
crake, eight footed, so common octopus right here. Um, number five is the common cuttlefish. Number five, common cuttlefish. Number six, can't say that word. Here is six, but I don't really see an animal. It says this one. Look at the gloss on that. Ooh, that's an excellent lithograph. So we got that one. Okay, up next, we've got this great children's book, The House We Live In, um, and a book of trades. So notice it's a cut and paste book. Now, there is no copyright on it. I have a feeling um, there were two pages. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it right here where one would cut out the images, not to fear they are still in the back. Um, but I have a feeling that that page did have a copyright on it, so we are missing that. But it is a full color book explaining such things as the lawn. We've got the parlor. Oh, I'll be right back. But um, we do have, you know, the dining room. It goes through various rooms in the house explaining what one would do there. Uh, if we do jump over, there's the kitchen. So here we go. We've got the storekeep explaining their position. Um, the carpenter, do know, I don't, it's kind of difficult, but the carpenter here, these, some of these pieces were cut out. So they did do the glue on them. Um, I don't feel, okay, yeah. So this guy going up a ladder, it's hard, but like you can feel that they were cut out. Again, we're at the miller. The miller, this guy was cut out. Now, when we jump back here to the back, so what is this? The ship builder, note that the pieces weren't glued in, but guess what? They're still here. So we do have those pieces. I think the ax, let me see here. I'm gonna pop them in there. I've got timber. Okay, so we're missing three pieces to it. We are missing three pieces. I can't show it to you because it's gonna fall down. <laughs> we're missing this guy back here. We're missing this pile of wood and this ax, but the other pieces are our present. Um, I just thought it was really cool. Um, yeah, like here, the kids, the stroller, those were pasted in there. They did a great job. It's 98, 97% present. So, um, why not? I think that was great. I think that was great. I'm really thrilled by this. Again, some kid cut these out and pasted them in there. I think that's quite exciting. It's a very early activity book, if you will. Let's jump into some gorgeous, wait till you see this color. It is a pressed glass, so E-A-P-G, Early American Pressed Glass. This was an alternative to the more expensive version, which was cut glass. Um, they would take those patterns, form a mold, and then pour, of course, the glass in them versus actually going in and cutting the glass to create these patterns. This color, this emerald, I am living for. There are no chips or cracks to it. I love this color. I think this color goes great as a complement to your amber, to your black. Oh my gosh, wait, stop it. Hold on a second. Let's do this. So we've got our gorgeous green. Let's add in our amber. Oh, this is going to be difficult to do. Let's do it. Let's just try it. So our amber and then black. Ooh, that is such a luxe high-end look to it. Oh, I live for that. It's full art deco at that point, those colorways to it. So, oh, I love this piece. Let's go Victorian again. How about this early? Look at that. Look at that. You know, obviously they didn't have electricity. So you've got like your little oil burners or votive. Um, I think somebody, I saw it referred to as a whale oil burner, um, but they could put in fats or oils 
and create a, um, a candle light from it. I think the safer alternative, obviously, is to put like a tea light or a votive in there. The glass inserts are definitely early glass. You can see the waviness to them. This particular one has been repaired, um, you know, back in the day when people actually used to repair things versus buying them brand new. I am totally okay with that. I'm super forgiving to it, just given the overall condition. It is not a scale. It doesn't weigh anything. This does not. It's not on an access. Uh, but that gorgeous silver plate, look at the detailing on this. This is phenomenal. This is just, again, a piece of history. I love the vining on that one. It's so cool. The brass accents, the patina. I am here for the patina on this one. Some people would maybe want to polish it. I don't know that I would want to polish it. I love the brass accents on this. You know, again, that's super subjective. Some people do not like mixed metals, i.e. silver with like a gold tone. I really enjoy that personally, but this is an exceptional piece. Got a great deal on it. This one, there is no condition issue outside of it kind of showing its age with a little bit of uh, cloudiness to it, but this is a great piece. Definitely have never uh, purchased nor sold one of these before, so I think that's fabulous. Okay, our next piece needs a bath. Fair warning on it, okay? Check this out. This green and white, it's super Victorian looking. While the pattern is very Victorian, it is kind of a mid-century glass. This is produced by Kanawha glass. We've got that gorgeous white texturing. That texturing really picked up kind of some dirt. So again, like I said, with the brown mist, we're gonna go ahead and take a magic sponge to that to clean it up. And that gorgeous minty green on the interior. And the better part is, is that the green does in fact fluoresce. So if you are a uranium lover, you've got a UV collection. Will it show better if I shine through here? No. Um, but this is a gorgeous piece. I love this. Good for mid-century or for your Victorian decor. Okay, we're about to go jewelry heavy. The first piece that I have here for you. Oh, look at that dragonfly brooch now. The main stone here in the thorax, you know, it does have some cloudiness to it. However, the ones here in the tail are still nice and sparkly. I did not, yeah, I didn't UV test any of those. We don't have any glow on it, but look at that. Oh my gosh, that is a treat for sure. I am just in love with this piece. Again, those antique pieces of jewelry, I have really enjoyed and have been vibing with these antique pieces. So I am just elated to be able to bring this piece. It's just, it's special. I love it. So we did get that one. Um, now I do have this little itty bitty. Look at this. Okay. We've got our Madonna here on the front. Okay, we flip it around. Now there is text right here. It's so exceptionally small. Uh, I don't know that it's, you're really gonna be able to read it, but it does say made in Czechoslovakia. You know, it, doesn't it look like it would be like almost a sweater clip? Well, it's not, it's not a sweater clip. Um, we can open this and in the back, or inside, there are, look, there is just the tiniest a little rosary. Now it doesn't have the crucifix, it's just simply the cross, but the little Czechoslovakian seed beads, is that not darling? I mean, you would not think that that would fit inside there, but yes, in fact, it does. This is so cool. Um, you know, it's, it's quite clearly, it's a very Catholic kind of thing. As somebody who was raised Catholic, I do better identify with it, but it's just such an amazing little religious piece. I just, how can you not appreciate that? Who would have thunk it? And I mean, it's tiny. It is an itty bitty. That is so cool. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. 
Now what I'm going to do next is show you um, several pieces of jewelry. I'm going to show them to you all at once. We have some, well this one chain is so very long. Okay. <laughs> Could have done this better, Michael, but, oh, excuse me, I just had a major sneezing fit, but <laughs> look at all of our jewelry. Look at our jewelry. Oh, I love it. So the first one that we have here, this one is a sterling silver. You know what? Let's see if we can get this to show up. But it is our camphor little pendant. Look at that. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Up next, we've got our micro mosaic pendant, but then we have a drop on it. Oh, isn't that great? Love that one. And then we do have our little Art Nouveau here. This is a faux pearl. Oh, look at, I just love that. The chain on this particular one is just fabulous. These are faux pearls. Okay, but I love this chain. The drop on that bad boy is quite extensive, so there is no clasp. On this one, you just simply, like the uh, flapper beads from earlier, you just kind of drape those over you, but I love that one. It's hard to tell which one is my favorite. This micro mosaic, all of that detail work, but the camphor one here, oh, I love it. Gorgeous pieces of jewelry. That's how you do jewelry, boys and girls. Speaking of a jewelry, this is just a pendant. I don't obviously have the chain for it. However, this one is, has been tested and it is 10 karat gold. It is this absolutely stunning. Art Deco, little Art Nouveau. Now that is a uranium glass stone on the interior. Look at the bail on that one. Let me see if I can get it to show for you guys. Even the bail on this is absolutely gorgeous. The little floral detailing on that, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it to, it just shows purple. I don't know why that's so hateful, but the stone itself does in fact fluoresce. Again, this is a tested 10 karat gold pendant. I think that is absolutely beautiful. Uh, obviously no chain, but gosh darn, how could you pass that up? I couldn't pass it up. I couldn't. I couldn't. There was no passing it up. Um, where am I at? Okay. Here we've got a Limoges France. Okay. This is a square. Clearly it is stamped. It's our brooch. Okay. This one is a porcelain. This is transfer. Alrighty. There are some hand-painted details on there, the beads or the pearls in her headband, a little bit of the floral accents, but you can kind of see the spots more so on her neckline here. That would indicate that piece is of course a transfer, but just a few little hand-painted detailing on there so they could call it hand-painted. Uh, but it's in excellent condition. I think that I have one very similar to this, but mine is broken. Um, I don't mind it, I like it, but it's nice to be able to bring one that's in really good antique condition. So we got that one. Now this is not actually antique, it is vintage. Let me grab my tape measure because I didn't know this and I do want to find this out before I show it to you. Like it is minuscule. Yeah. Look at that cameo. The cameo itself is a fourth of an inch. I mean, that is, look at how microscopic that little one is. Isn't she darling? And a gold tone. Vintage, not antique, but we do have our stopper here. So you, know, you can tack it onto a lapel or to a hat. I've just, mm, it being so microscopic, I just had to pick this one up. It's so so tiny. I mean, not even a fingernail. Look at that. Precious. Okay, our last piece of the video is definitely our biggest piece. Okay, are we ready? Look at that. That yellow satin glass with our hand-painted gold gilding. 
We do, of course, have the prisms on there. I can't say with certainty that the prisms are original to this particular piece, but oh my gosh, this is a good solid thick piece of glass. It is cased, um, again, with a hand painting. There are no chips. There are no cracks to it. This is definitely a statement piece for sure. Uh, I love this. Um, that soft buttery yellow again with the satin the gilding there are some hits to it but overall in really good condition we do have all of the prisms represented but like i say i can't say you know these are definitely the original prisms to it now <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna use, it's interesting that I have this piece. I wanna use this piece as an example. Um, this is an example of what we would refer to as Bohemian glass. Um, the reason that we call it Bohemian is, is because it does incorporate a region. In other words, it is not, um, how do I put this? Bohemian is not a type of glass. Bohemian glass is just to identify, generally speaking, its location. So there's not, that's it's not like this is Bohemian glass because they made this style. They did hand painting, they did enameling, they did gilding, and a variety of different countries, including, of course, the United States. Um, we are calling it Bohemian because it is most likely from that specific region. Now, the reason that I would call this one Bohemian versus there was a flea market video um, where it was essentially it was the same thing, right? But the glass was much different. The glass was much thinner. It, you know, you, well, this one has a great ring to it. Um, I, of course, don't have a piece to show it. Um, there was one and I referred to it as a Bristol. The reason that I refer to that one as Bristol is, is because of the region in which it was most likely made, which was Bristol, England. There is no, that is Bristol, when we say Bristol glass, we are looking at where it was most likely manufactured. And when we say Bohemian, we are looking at where it is most likely manufactured. Not that it is exclusive to or specific, um, but Okay, it cut me off. I only have... So, as I was saying, we look at this from where it was most likely made, um, and that's just something to keep in mind. So, that's our last piece of, of our haul today. Well, guys, there you have it. Everything that I bought off camera. I do hope that you saw some beautiful things. Maybe you learned uh, one or two things. You might have gotten a laugh one way or the other. I appreciate you checking out today's video. Definitely down in the comments, let me know what your favorite find was. Um, I I can't wait to see that. Um, yes, these items will be going up for sale. Uh, more than likely, probably Tuesday and Wednesday's sale. So I'm looking forward to bringing these to you all. Uh, I appreciate you all checking out the video. And as always, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.